Uh, first, before I get started, um, I know that recently, since the transition to live streaming, audio has been somewhat of a issue. Uh, right now, during school, I'm really getting into finals week. So after final week during spring break, I'll do what, what's within my power to try and uh, sort things out and get that fixed. Otherwise, I do. Uh, we're on Spotify now, and I do really emphasize that you guys come watch the live stream. I do it every Friday at 7 central time. Anyway, let's get right into esports. Uh, starting with the uh, LCS, Team Liquid, 9 and 1, Cloud9, 8 and 2, followed by TSM, which is 6 and 4, FlyQuest, which is 5 and 4, or 5 5, my bad, and then tied for 5th place is CounterLogic, Echo Fox, Golden Guardians, and Optic, and Dead Light Last is uh, Clutch Gaming and 100 Thieves. In Europe, G2, 12 and 1, which is ridiculous, followed by Team Vitality. Tied in third place is Origins, uh, the team I can never pronounce each week, uh, Splice. And then six is SK, Fnatic, Misfits. And last is XL and Rogue. In Korea, Griffin's first. Tied for second is uh, SKT and Sandbox. Tied for fourth is Damwon and Kingzone. Six is Hanwha. Set tied for seventh is Gen G and Afrika Freaks. Ninth is KT and tenth is Gen Air Wings. In the Overwatch League, of course, as I am streaming this, they are currently playing. It is currently Lo uh, Los Angeles Gladiators versus. Uh, London Spitfires, but New York is in first, followed by Vancouver, then Paris, then Atlanta, then Philadelphia, then Toronto, then Chengdu, then Gungazu. I'm sorry if I butchered those. And then the playoff cutoff point is there, and then it seems like after that is San Francisco, San Francisco Seoul. Boston, London, Dallas, Los Angeles Gladiators, Hangzhou, Spark, Shanghai Dragons, Houston, Florida, Los Angeles, Valence, and Washington is dead last. In terms of game releases, since we are now in the March of 2019, Dead and Alive 6 came out. Uh, what you have to look forward to probably uh, is... Devil May Cry 5, they announced it last year, I believe, at like around this time in E3. Uh, so Devil May Cry 5 comes out March 8th, which I believe that will be Friday, which today is Friday. So in a week, uh, Devil May Cry 5 comes out. Later on, we'll see The Division 2. And then some Final Fantasies and some remasters and etc. for the Switch. So the uh, first news... Uh, that happened this week would be uh, Overwatch releasing their uh, 26th hero uh, which in my opinion they should not be doing with uh, just the state of the game right now so his name's uh, Baptist he is uh, African of course I don't personally I don't know why all black all the black characters in Overwatch like whenever they think of black people always they don't think of like African like African Americans they always think of like actual Africans which is cool but we already have Doomfist and then you think of South Africa and South Africa was like really colonized so it's not super African uh, but they always do South African I think he's Jamaican uh, don't quote me on that but I think he's Jamaican anyway Getting into his abilities, well, we can look at his story. He's a support slash damage, like, hybrid character. And, uh, his first passive allows him to crouch and then jump super high, as you see there. He has his, uh, weapon has two modes. It has a healing mode, which you shoot and you heal him. And then it has a burst fire. 
as it shows here. And then he has a he like a like he clutches his hand and then he like uh, in an AOE around him specifically. He then heals his teammates that are around him. Uh, and then he has which I think is fucking OP and why they definitely should not add this character is that he throws out this device and this device can be destroyed. However, it protects anyone in that area that the device, uh, in the area of the device from dying. So you're basically invincible. And when a world of goats where that's the entire strategy, that's fucking awful. Uh, next he has a, his ultimate is a wall that basically it's like a square and you put it up and whoever shoots through it does more damage. And here's his boost again. So overview, you scroll down. Uh, Baptist Will's gun, yeah, he's support hybrid. Bionic Launcher, Baptist fires three round bursts. Bionic Launcher rewards accurate and recoil control with significant damage output. It also doubles as a healing device, lobbing projectiles that heal allies near the point of impact. Regenerative Burst, Baptist uh, activates an intense regenerative burst that heals himself and nearby allies over time. Immortal Im Immortality Field. Baptist uses a device that creates a field that prevents allies from dying. The generator can be destroyed. Amplification Matrix. Baptist creates a matrix that doubles the damage and healing effects of friendly projectiles that pass through it. Exos Boost. By first crouching, Baptist can jump super high. So... If this character came out, well, here we go. All right, so uh, Jean Baptist Augustus is full name, age 36. Uh, occupation, combat medic. Base of operations, uh, Togana Healy formerly. Affiliation, Caribbean, uh, Talon formerly. Blah, 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 lore stuff. If you want to go read this, go check it out on the website. But if so here's my overview of this character is that this character came out uh seems like a second Anna or Anya he seems like a second Anna or Anna uh which is cool I mean it's cool cause that character is like one of my favorite healers in Overwatch uh and probably the best character they've ever actually come out with I think in my opinion she was the first I think uh but she has the problem of like the de depending on who's playing it, you're, you're a healer, but then like people DPS, um, and that's I see the same problem with this dude where they pick him and he's you know supposed to be a healer, but they just pick him and they DPS with him. But then because he's so vice versa and he has things that just keep people continuously alive, and like he uh. He basically will come in and push the GOATS meta even further. Because the GOATS meta is basically... You have your three tanks and your three healers. Your tanks run around, sit on the point, dealing damage or whatever the fuck. And your healers just sit back and try to heal the tanks. And the entire strategy is to not die, you know? That's the entire point, is that your team does not die. And with him coming in... With the AoE burst, uh, the AoE launch burst fire, and uh, his fucking anti, his iframe shield, right? He just he just pushes that meta and that environment even more. Of course, we're gonna have to wait and see until he comes out, but that's what I'm thinking. Uh, and news that actually matters now, uh, Pokemon. Had a Pokemon Direct a uh, couple days ago, and we finally got the announcement that I've been waiting for since like the Switch was released, which is Gen 8 Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I was actually very excited to see this. Um, the only other Pokemon game since we've gotten was uh, Pokemon Let's Go, po uh, Let's Go, 
uh, Pikachu and Eevee, which was I always thought was not, it wasn't going to be an actual Pokemon game, it's just going to be kind of a test for the Switch. And now that they did that, they can actually come out with a good Pokemon game. I played Ultra Sun uh, and Ultra Moon, specifically Ultra Moon, and I loved Ultra Moon. I thought it was fantastic storytelling. Yes, it took out key uh, pictures of p Pokemon, but I thought I still thought it was fantastic storytelling, and there's still so much to do. So, with this, let's go over the starter tap, starter type Pokemon. Uh, the grass type is called Grokey. Uh, he's a mischief chimp Pokemon that is full of boundless curiosity. Uh, the fire type is called Score Bunny. A rabbit Pokemon that is always running about, bursting with energy. And the water type Pokemon is called Scobly. It's like a chameleon water. Uh, a somewhat timid water lizard Pokemon that shoots out attacks as a hit as it hides itself in the water. So, you know, already starting out strong. I loved the I loved the Gen Seven starters. These uh, they seem to be going with like uh. The Gen 7 starters were all kind of cute, but then they just became monsters, except Rowlet, which was the fire type, but they uh, they were all kind of cute. Or no, Rowlet was the the grass type. He was cute, but all the other ones were, they were all kind of cute, but they turned into monsters, essentially. And uh, these starters just seem all kind of cute. Uh, the fire type Pokemon from Gen 7 had a you know, if you watch the show, his personality was a lot more, you know, fuck you, do whatever I want. But we'll see what it is. Uh, the region is called the uh, Galar region. Um, there's an image on it that if you go on the stream or you go on the website, you can see. Uh, it looks amazing. It looks a lot of fun. Uh, and it definitely looks like a region that just... A journey as you can see if uh, right here on the stream there's someone of a London area that uh, like where you can see Ben B Big Ben so it's probably based off you know if you didn't know actually all the Pokemon regions are based off of uh, areas in Japan so I don't know which region this is uh, based off of but this city right here seems to have a London theme to it so it's coming, there's no release date for it. Uh, it's coming late 2019, so probably around the holiday. Of course, it's for the Nintendo Switch. In case you're wondering, gyms are back in Sun and Moon. They did not have gyms. They had like these sort of like challenges and you're becoming like the uh, taming the wild and the island. So gyms are returning, which is good because some people had, they were mad about how there weren't any gems in a Sun and Moon in Gen, Gen 7. So seeing gems come back is good. Also, uh, unlike Sun and Moon, or not Sun and Moon, pardon me. Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. There will not be, uh, in Let's go Pikachu and Eevee, you could see the Pokemon that you were encountering. So you could just avoid the Pokemon that you didn't want to encounter, or you can go and encounter them. In this game, wild encounters are returning, like in every classical Pokemon, uh, to be expected. So it's really good to see that come back. Uh, lastly, before we get into smaller news too, let's go into Fortnite. Right. Everyone's least favorite Battle Royale game now. Uh, Fortnite Season 8 just started, and I want to start with the good part of this, which is Season 8, then the bad. Um, it started, I believe, yesterday, actually. Uh, or a couple days ago. And, uh, for the last, since Apex was released, Apex has been the top viewed game on Twitch. When Season 8 Fortnite came out, Fortnite returned to its top spot. Now, however, at the time of recording this, it did drop. So, and that will kind of go into the next part that I'm going to talk about after this. Uh, for anyone who didn't know, it's pirate themed. So they got rid of basically where Whaling Woods was, that entire section of the map where the block was. Uh, they got rid of that. They have a map. 
do not know if they have a map. But they got rid of that part of the entire game, uh, which is sad. Um, one of the things about Fortnite, like, when the season changes, people get mad competitively because, of, like, you know, some of those areas are drop areas for people. And when they get removed or changed, it kind of fucks up everyone's entire game. And they just got to adapt real fast. Uh, that's one of the things League used to kind of suffer from. Uh, then they kind of slowed it down and now it suffers from a different issue. There, well, of course, there will always be an issue. So I think the first thing to be noted here, uh, pirate cannons are now in the game. Um, they're replacing shopping carts, essentially. They're shopping carts that you can aim, shoot through them, and you can put yourself in them and, you know, shoot yourself out of a cannon. Exactly like how uh, Sea of Thieves works. So uh, that's kind of the new uh, device addition to the game. Uh, things that have been vaulted are Sneaky Snowman, Shilling Grenades, the fucking planes, which I know people are really happy about. Uh, the planes were fun, but they're also really annoying. Uh, shopping carts because of the uh, new pirate cannons. And uh, all-terrain carts. Uh, the hunting rifle has been updated. Uh, a lot of changes to assault rifles, which I don't know why, but it's very interesting. They basically decreased the drop rate of assault rifles in general. Uh, for, after, for example, Epic now, uh, it was 7.02%. Uh, now it's 3.52%. Uh, to get a epic assault rifle, which was odd to me, and that, that and they just dropped that across the board. Uh, gameplay wise, in the new areas, they added uh, lava. You know, cool uh, vents that boost you up in the air for mobility, of course. Uh, they added a ping system because why not copy Apex and the, that game probably needs it. Uh, This is a weird change. Increase infinite dab duration from 11 hours to 12 hours in the lobby. Cool. Uh, it's really it. Bug fixes 50 v 50 in case you cool, want to play that. Uh, audio stuff, stuff, stuff. Uh, the new battle pass is of course out. I know there's a banana skin in that in case you want to, you know, fucking be a banana. But that's kind of the good news of Fortnite. The bad news, however, is that 48% of Fortnite's revenue dropped. Uh, that's a lot. That's nearly 50%. Uh, and I think it dropped in like... December of last year, so before Apex happened. Now, uh, this is to take kind of with a grain of salt, because of course we don't actually get these numbers but from like Epic, but like, yes, yeah, so it dropped 40%, but then like the new season immediately starts, so maybe it shot back up. But depending on how it only went up the, on viewership the first day and it came back down the second day, uh, you know, shows that maybe not is basically what i'm thinking is that you know uh people are moving away from fortnite and going to apex uh which is interesting because i think it's a thing it has to, it has to do with competitively i think it has to do with how fortnite markets itself and how uh competitive it is my problem with fortnite has always been I have, of course, you know, if you listen, I have problems with the game, but my biggest problem has always been uh, how it markets itself. It's so meme -y. It's so... so much of a joke that it markets itself uh, as kind of a comedic game, and that's cool. But when it gets to a point where, like, people, and I think adults really want it to be a competitive environment, then... You can't market yourself like that anymore. And it continues to market itself like that. And Epic kind of pushes con uh, content and items and cash and all that. Then making the game fundamentally better. 
uh, this kind of the biggest best example of them doing this is how uh, their MOBA died where they kept pushing cosmetics and uh, new content over quality of life changes and changes to make the game better uh, Apex forced them to kind of make those changes but even still you see with the this battle pass and stuff that they're still going to just force the battle pass and the new stuff content and stuff more than uh making competitive changes with the rank and with apex it's still relatively new of course but we have not seen that shift so apex has more of a competitive environment than fortnite does where fortnite the children are still you know playing that but apex has uh, can grow up to be more competitively and that's why I think the revenue kind of dropped a little bit is because a lot of people are not playing Apex because it's more fun it's more competitive it's the same battle royale concept as Fortnite uh, and people would rather play that than you know buy all the fucking memes and whatever and deal with all of its fucking jokes bullshit like example the sword of last year than Fortnite has um Moving on, we have uh, the Division 2 beta, I think, is currently going on on the Epic Store, not on Steam, because they, they Epic is trying to force their store. So if, you're, uh, so if you want to play the Division 2 beta, uh, go for it. The other thing is Anthem 2, released uh, last Friday, uh, is not doing too hot because of Apex, essentially. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, it's a broken game. Apparently, Anthem has sold less, like half of the copies that Mass Effect Andromeda sold. And from what I heard, uh, Mass Effect Andromeda is a terrible game. Moving on. Uh, in League of Legends, they, uh, the rank, they did a, rank, a new rank thing. So they had a new rank system, if you didn't know, uh, for North America and Korea. And they added... So it used to be you'd have bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, masters, challenger. And each one of those medals had five tiers in them, right? And you had one overall rank. They took that out. They added five different ranks for different roles. And they added iron. Then it goes to bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, masters, grandmasters, challenger. And they took out the fifth tier in each division. So what, and then they gave people uh, more LP and they boosted their MMR. So what this the why they did this right is because in Diamond Five, which now doesn't exist, uh, basically climbing in Diamond Five was like climbing from Bronze Five to Diamond Five. You know, it was an entire it was it was really difficult to climb out of that. So they uh, you know they added Masters. So now all the Diamond people got pushed to Masters, but then the majority of the player base is in silver bronze right low silver high bronze somewhat there and uh so they added iron to push out you know so that people in bronze and to push that out so for the master grandmasters here that they added for diamond plus elo that helped a lot of people because now it's a lot easier to climb, and yes, that has it's had its problems, but it's a lot easier to climb up there. However, for the iron tier, it did absolutely fucking nothing, uh, which, in my opinion, is a disappointment. In my opinion, it made it harder. It, it's with like this new five grindy rank. Uh, so they released an article basically talking about this. Uh, I'm just gonna go over it real quick, sum it up. Uh, but they did the good first. So for the good, uh, they're happy with what uh, how the placements went. 
which I'm happy with like that because I think seeing your rank and where you're placed and getting more LP and stuff, uh, even though yes, it had problems, it, is, it was less stressful. Uh, they're happy on the impact of the positional matchmaking. Basically, if you're uh, if you're a gold mid laner but a silver support, and you get placed in support, then uh, you'll get placed in a lower rate game than you would if you were in your gold mid laner game. So they're happy with that. But there's problems with mid fill and mid support because that because mid's like the most popular role, but arguably in my opinion right now it's the worst role. Uh, problems that they're seeing is that it's too grindy and yes hell yes it is uh grinding five different ranks to climb is incredibly you know fucking just difficult annoying uh it doesn't feel rewarding i agree with this uh with the splash system and all that uh if you get an off roll it doesn't feel rewarding to play in that off roll i've got placed in like support and i'm like why even try you know why doesn't care it doesn't matter if i lose this game so that's definitely a problem that is going on and because of also because of that it's not that competitive uh so it's very low competitive so if you get placed in your off roll you know again why try who gives a fucking shit uh so it's not super duper competitive uh we're also they say and i quote we're, we're also evaluating whether we should end the position rank preview and go back to single rank so that means that they would go back uh to single back to the old system but you would still keep your highest rank uh where they just take out instead of having five ranks you just go back to having one it looks like uh and I quote, we'll detail the actions we're taking here on March 8th. So March 8th, which is next Friday, they'll give us more news on their decision, I guess, on what they're doing with rank. Uh, high MMR, such matchmaking, such rank. And a quote, specifically affecting players in Diamond and above. Uh, here we go. Players in Masters who, should, who shouldn't be. So because of the push, you know, out of Diamond, now those players who got really boosted and now we're in ma Masters, who are playing with Challenger and Grandmasters players who don't belong there. That's not their skill level, but they're still there. So in higher, so what this did is like, yes, it fixed the higher player base's issues of like matchmaking and the grind, but now they're dealing with lower quality games. And yeah so that's that uh increase lp gains in diamond and above so if you're in diamond you're getting a lot of lp than like you were supposed to i think they fixed this t or like changed it like weeks ago uh masters plus players match with lower diamond players exactly so that's the problem so that's so they're just having so yes it fixed the dis dis uh Fuck. Where the player base needs to go, but now the quality of the games and matchmaking is messed up. Uh, so what's next? And I'm just gonna quote from here on. It has been a bit of a whirl, uh, whirlwind so far. We still have some points, some pain points to fix. We'll be back with another update on March 8th. In that update, expect us to share specific solutions to the problems with position ranks and high MMR matchmaking, exact timing on when we'll be making changes, how the changes will affect you. So, here's my take on it. I am not that high in the ladder. I am a high, low gold, high silver player, uh, which is pretty much average a little bit above average player um i can see the matchmaking issues coming off uh being a problem in high elo and if they said that they were going to do a rank reset it would be for diamond plus which is good but the way i see it is that that's not the majority of the player base and that's not the problem that they should be focusing on if I can find the, hold on.
I can find the article that I was looking at. Yes, here it is. So, this article came out maybe last Wednesday or Friday. Basically showing, using the Riot API, what the distributed chart looks like. Um, if you just search uh, League of Legends ranked uh, Season 9 of Distribution, it will show you what it looks like. Um, and if you're watching the stream or you go out and go to uh, the YouTube channel and watch the stream, you'll see, uh, you can watch it, see it here. But basically, uh, a majority of the player base right now in the highest is in Silver 2, right? Uh, below that is Silver 3, Silver 4. So a majority of that, so the player base is in Silver, essentially. And then gold, and then it drops off, and then, you know, silver. So silver four, or iron four, which is the added, the division they added to fix the anyone below uh, diamond, diamond problem, right? Is, uh, counts for 0.25% of the player base. Iron three, 0.92. Iron two, 1.60 and iron one uh 1.99 so a little bit two percent right bronze bronze four 3.91 three five point two twenty five percent bronze three six point eighty two percent bronze one seven point eighty three percent silver four all right, this is kind of now where we get into the majority of the player base. 9.73%, 10.22%, silver three, 10.63%. So 10, basically about 20% of the player base is in silver three to silver two, okay? And then silver one is 7%, uh, Go for 7.9%, blah, 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 blah. And then challenger is the five, you're in the 5%. So you're 0.05%. So basically, uh, my point being is that iron did nothing. So to me, from the rank distribution, they need to fix that. Where it, uh, they need to recalculate rewards. Honestly, I think they could remove iron and it wouldn't matter. Uh, I think yes, it'd be more grindy for bronze, I guess, but it would not matter. If silver's the average, then I think the one rewards in total should be pushed back to silver. If you're in silver, you should be getting rewarded. Uh, you know, you should be getting the fucking skin or whatever the fuck. Uh, and then maybe get better shit if you're in gold plus. Um, it's different compared to how it was, uh, in last year at the end of the year in december where a majority of the player base was gold four that's because people just got there and then they sat there because you know that's where uh or actually let's go farther back in time a, major a majority of the player base was in gold five because they got there and they sat there for rewards they didn't play rank they just get there and they sit there for rewards but the majority is still in silver uh With 10, 20, with 20% in the player base being silver four to silver three, right? Uh, and then 14.94% is in gold four. So basically people would get placed in silver, they would climb to gold and they would just stay gold five the entire time. They wouldn't even climb to get out. Uh, and maybe it's helped with that, uh, adding iron. But in reality, the way I, it feels and the way I see it, it has done absolutely nothing. Um, so if they are going to do changes, uh, I would like to see some sort of changes for the majority of the player base. Uh, because it's just sad to see that when 50% of the player base right now is in silver and then like 30% is in gold. But and iron and three point three point fifty five nine percent are in iron. 
So it just, it just, you know, it just seems like they need to do something with that. They need to look at like, okay, what's the point of iron if it hasn't really fixed the problem as much as Masters has it with a uh, diamond. Anyway, that's going to conclude this week's show. Uh, thank you for listening or watching. It's not a sport. Uh, I will be back next week. Please check out our Instagram, our uh, Twitch, where you can catch the live stream. Uh, if you want to see all past shows, uh, go on to our YouTube channel. If you want to listen, you can listen from iTunes, Spotify, or SoundCloud, or Google.